these four Yorkshire lads were the outer limits. And these are the kind of sounds they really did like to make once. The sort of noise that the supergroups like the cream, blind faith, humble pie and blood, sweat and tears make successfully. Progressive sounds they called, but they brought no progress to the outer limits. Three years ago, the outer limits thought they'd be up there amongst the greats by now, high in the pop stratosphere, but they're not. In fact, they don't exist anymore. They've broken up. The pressures of plodding from gig to gig, marking time, wishing and hoping for the big break, killed them off. The Outer Limits give up a lot for their dream of pop stardom. They give up their jobs, their nights, their spending money. But one thing they never gave up, hope. I think, yeah, I think we've got a chance of making it if we can stick together. The difficult thing is to keep going, is to keep living until that time comes. We've got the goods to make it records. It's just a question of keeping going and, and you know, until it happens. We did a tour with Jimi Hendrix, that was great. Um, I thought at the time, I was sort of hoping anyway, that the record that was coming out, that yeah, was due any time when I joined the group, would um, be the big one, you know. Would make the, make the charts at least. So, I thought it was a good record. Everybody thought it was a good record in the group. Um, the, the record company was very impressed with it. Tony Hall said it should have been a hit. To be quite honest, I sort of expected to be running around in an E-type jag now. Steve, at the beginning, why did you join the Outer Limits? Well, I was playing with a, a pretty smallish band at the time, and I'd known the, uh, the fellows in the group for quite a while before I actually joined. And uh, there came a time where I think there was a, a disagreement, you know, with one of the members. And he left and I was asked uh, to take his place, mainly because they knew me, you know, fairly well. They wanted somebody who they knew. And um, they knew I could play. So uh, I was the, you know, got first refusal for the job. But I heard them play, the three of them. Heard them play the sort of stuff they were doing. and. Uh... I thought, well, <laughs> better get in with them. Pretty good group. A year ago, the Outer Limits were rated as one of the best half dozen groups in the West Riding. But that's nothing. You need a massive following locally before the pop moguls take a blind bit of notice. And the swell of local feeling that swept the Beatles from Liverpool and the animals from Newcastle to the top never came to springboard the Outer Limits from the Yorkshire scene to the top of the charts. It was struggle, struggle all the way. And money was the biggest problem. Everybody thinks just because you're in a group, you know, you're in a bomb. But it's just not true. And we draw only six pounds because expenses are absolutely so fantastic. And we got uh, five pounds a week. But we needed a little bit more. It's not a lot, I know, but we needed some more to buy a self employed insurance stamp. So we got six pounds a week. That's much dear. Um, the 100 PA, that one, two bigger columns, and the 100 watt amp. Mm. That's combined. The two two columns in the amps, 311. Complete. We all wanted more money, but it just wasn't there. The money wasn't there. So we had so many debts to pay. We had a van to pay. The gear kept on breaking down. Drumsticks, skins, other guitar strings. Once uh, Jeff dropped his guitar, we had to be cracking it. That had to be mended. Strings, even a set of string for my guitar cost seven guineas. Just for four bass guitar strings, you see. Well, I, I couldn't pay for them myself. I had to come out of the group. And things like that, you know. And it's, it's amazing how, how quickly the money just went, you know, just like that. There's absolutely no inspiration from Leeds. I, I, that's talking from a personal point of view, anyway. They know what they like, um, and what, what they like in general, especially in Leeds, I think, is so. And Motown, and uh, they just want the same old stuff. 
they, I think generally 70% of them, or 80% anyway, don't want to listen to any new sounds or anything original or creative. They just want to hear the same thump thump. What kind of pop music do you like, mate? No, not so. Why? Yeah, better, you know. What do you want? They're just a noise you can dance to. No, no noise is something else. Yeah. The bass and noise. Can't call it a noise, is it? Oh, soul, rock steady. What, 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 what else? Oh, that's about it, really. How about you? What kind of pop music do you like? Well, soul and Tamla and rock steady and a lot of the old Tamla records, you know. Do you like a noise in fact? Yeah, more of a noise, yeah. Why? I don't know, it gets your beat, you know, it keeps you going, you know. That was the scene, rock steady, but the Outer Limits did get a bit further than most pop groups. They made three records, like this one, and all three were released. off with a title which was uh, I thought instantly commercial appeal and I just wanted to get a story some sort of a story around it a story um, with music around it but in two and a half minutes a story is very difficult to do especially when you've got to put catch lines in and hook lines and uh, um, a sort of an, an instrumental break in the middle We just didn't get a chance, you know, we had about three plays on the radio and the big boss down at BBC obviously didn't flip over it and so it wasn't given any importance, it was given one or two plays and that was it and that's no good. So, Great Train Robbery, like their other two discs, didn't impress the men who mattered, and it wasn't long before final disillusionment began to set in. The final gig came on May the 10th when we played at the bowling alley in Leeds. Excel Bow, and um, that was the last gig. We decided to split. We never sort of sat there and said, "Okay, this is it. This is the last booking." We all knew it was inevitable. Had to finish, and so when when we played the booking, we just played it for last because there was just no point crying about it. We just treated it as a huge joke. We had to. You, know, you can either laugh or cry. So we laughed. Sorry that the, that this particular group's gone because I thought we were very good. Um, glad. Because uh, no more travelling round. That's that's the the main one of the main things about it. You know, the, the travelling. I'm glad because of that. I didn't begin to tire of it, but um, as much as uh, enthusiasm declining about um, February, it wasn't tiring of the group. But the uh, the thought that well, the record hasn't made it. Um, the company record company didn't like the uh, the demo discs we sent down. They didn't like any of them, and. Uh, I thought, well, the end of the line is surely near. It must must happen soon, you know. Of course it did. Well, half and half, really. Uh, relief that I'm not having to um, worry from day to day where the next penny's coming from. And regret, really, because uh, I enjoyed working with the, with the group as a group. You know, they were good to work with. And I had a, a lot of good times together, you know, playing. The Outer Limits aren't really bitten. Two have gone to other groups, one's out of music altogether, but group leader Jeff Christie still hopes to have his talent recognised. Well, I'm pushing my songs. I'm basically a songwriter and performer. A lot of people have been saying for a long time that I should go on my own as a solo performer. In exactly which capacity at this stage, I'm not really sure. I haven't made my mind up, but I probably will do something on my own, either singing or something. But I 
certainly intend to try and make a breakthrough with my songs, you know. chance for the outer limits but this song that the leader jeff wrote and performed with them certainly has something about it So perhaps the Outer Limits didn't quite live and die in vain, perhaps. Chance to hear you 